Hello, everyone. Along the 21st century maritime Silk Road, a wealth of amazing stories have happened. Indonesia is an important stop along the Silk Road. In this session, we are going to introduce some basic facts about the largest country in Southeast Asia, Indonesia. How much do you already know about this country? Where is it? And how big is the land area? How many people live in the country? And what do the local people speak? Well, today I will guide you to explore Indonesia from its geography, population, language, attractions, and cultural norms. Geographically, Located of the contrast of mainland Southeast Asian in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Indonesia is the world's largest island nation, consisting of five major islands and about 30 smaller groups. There are 70,508 islands. About 6,000 are inhabited. I believe that. You may know some of famous ones, such as Sumatra, Java, Bali, and New Guinea. Due to its location, natural disasters, especially earthquakes, are common in Indonesia. Indonesia's climate is tropic with hot and humid weather in snow elevation areas. In the highlands of Indonesia's island. Temperatures are more moderate. Indonesia also has a wet season that lasts from December to March. The geographical nature of Indonesia made it a maritime trading power in the past and now contributes to its diverse culture. Secondly, its people. The current population of Indonesia is more than 270 million. It is the fourth most populous country in the world. There are more than 300 ethnic groups in Indonesia, each with its own culture. According to the last census, Muslim groups make up approximately 88% of total population making Indonesia the largest Muslim society in the world. The Indonesian population consists of many ethnicities. 45% are Javanese, 40% Sudanese, 7.5% Madaris, and 26% are other ethnic groups. The Indonesian national model Kanika, which means unity in diversity, makes reference to the diversity of the Indonesian population. Thirdly, language. There are more than 700 languages and dialects spoken in Indonesia. They normally belong to the different ethnic groups of the population. Bahasa Indonesia is a national language. Most formal education and nearly all mass medium and government business are conducted in this language. If you can greet people in Bahasa Indonesia, it may give others a good first impression. So, let's say how to greet people in Bahasa Indonesia. Hello, good morning. Selamat pagi. Good afternoon. Selamat siang. Good evening. Selamat malam. Even though Bahasa Indonesia is a national language, English is a leading foreign language in big cities. Indonesian students learn English beginning in primary school. Kindergartens nowadays even also teach English to toddlers because English is very important to the tourism industry. Over a million domestic or foreign tourists visit Indonesia annually. 
especially Bani. Also, Mandarin is of popularity because of the great number of overseas Chinese in Indonesia. In fact, the languages of Indonesia are interesting topic for research. Fourthly, attractions. Indonesia is a land of contrasts, a land where the spiritual manifests itself through diverse cultures, magnificent temples and artwork. Its tourism industry has contributed greatly towards the country's gross domestic product. The government has made a new tourism slogan called Wonderful Indonesia. To increase market competitiveness, the beauty of the archipelago is that moving from one island to another is easily done. Each part of it offers unforgettable experiences. Firstly, let's look at Jakarta. Its hustle and bustle is easily counteracted by some beach lounging exploring one of the nearby islands. Secondly, Java. It dominates Indonesia politically, economically, and culturally. Four of Indonesia's eight UNESCO World Heritage Sites are located in Java. Yugi Akata is the most popularly sought-after city on the island of Java. Latin with classical Javanese, fine art, music, dance, and drama. The city is also home to the temples of Burubudur and Prambanan in Indonesia. Bali is a very well-known holiday destination for visitors. It is unique and unmatched. There is no other place like Bali in this world. There is a magical blend of culture, people, nature, activities, weather, cumulative delights, light knife, and beautiful accommodations. Fifth, Indonesia's do's and don'ts. Indonesia is a complex and welcoming place. Here, you'll find that everyone has their own unique style, traditions, and a dash of flavor to add to the melting pot of the vibrant and diverse nation. As a newcomer, a good starting point is some of the cultural norms that most people in Indonesia have in common. This will help you avoid making any faux pas and appreciate the facility archipelago. Do's When visiting temples, mosques, or royal palaces, cover your knees and shoulders and wear clothes that are not too tight. Some temples will provide you with a saran and sash to wear. Do use it. Treat your shoes of when entering houses, places of worship place, and the like. Use right hand when eating and giving or receiving gifts. Don't. Never use your left hand for anything. The left hand is considered dirty in Indonesia. Don't speak loudly to Indonesian people. They might think you are rude. Indonesian people are soft and gentle. Don't wear a tank top when you are in public places. And women should avoid wearing short skirts. Don't complain or disturb Indonesians when they are praying, especially when Muslims are praying in the mosque. Religion is the most sensitive topic in Indonesia. Don't pat adults on the head and it should even be avoided with children. It's impolite. All right, we have had a quick and thorough look at Indonesia from its geography, population, languages, attractions, and cultural norms. I hope you have a better understanding about this 
archipelago country. See you next time.